production unsteady state heat transfer so you are all aware of this particular thing so i'm basically you know uh, giving a brief once again so if the temperature of a body uh, and you know uh, uh, you already know that this is a practical thing because you know in nature nothing remains steady so uh, if in nature nothing remains steady so we have to follow the nature so so uh, it, it it has to be unsteady right so uh, when the temperature actually varies with time so it becomes unsteady it becomes unsteady so unsteady is quite practical to approach so that's why it's very much important to study this particular topic so let's go into it so conduction unsteady transient the common terminology is transient heat transfer we all know as uh, as i've already told you in my lecture video so if the temperature of a body does not vary with time it is said to be in a steady state that we have already done when we were deriving the three dimensional heat conduction equation all right so the right hand side of that uh, we were turning out to be zero when uh, we are talking of the steady state okay but if there is an abrupt change in its surface temperature okay so the body attains an equilibrium temperature or a steady state after some period so during this period the temperature varies with time and the body is said to be in an unsteady transient state the same thing the same thing that's uh, that, that i've already told you uh, prior to starting this video okay so the transient thing is basically it's an unsteady state because suppose uh, if you are uh, suppose if you're doing quenching of a metal okay so you know what is quenching you are heating it in an oven uh, suppose at around uh, 1100 degrees celsius 1200 degrees celsius and then just taking out from it uh, from uh, taking out the metal from an oven and then just dipping it into the, the cold oil bath or a cold water bath so suddenly it, it will uh, you know go for the crystallization of the structure and it will become very hard and brittle okay so you know there is an abrupt change uh, the abrupt change in the temperature which the metal has undergone so this kind of abrupt uh, temperature change with the increased duration of the time is called the transient change is called the transient heat transfer so it was a perfect uh, example to explain and there are several ex uh, uh, examples that's written on the right hand side of the screen so it's like cooling of an ic engine you know that you know uh, when there is an engine combustion okay uh, suppose it combusts at around 700 degrees celsius or 800 degrees celsius in the internal of it so uh, when the temperature uh, means when the heat comes out on its surface and when there it encounters the fins so you know uh, it actually uh, and, uh, and, uh, and you know uh, it is actually uh, you know covered with the air so you know there is a gradual heat loss so when there is a gradual heat loss so actually the heat loss increases with the increases duration with the increasing duration of time so this is again a very uh, practical or very fitting example of the transient heat transfer the automobile engine is the same case okay now the heating and the cooling of the metal billets that's what i have explained you it's the the process of quenching okay now the cool, cooling and the freezing of food you know we all uh, do it day in and day out every day in our home okay now heat treatment of metals by quenching just now i have uh, i've explained you starting as topic of various heat exchange uh, units in power installation brick burning vulcanization of rubber vulcanization we all know is the addition of sulfur compounds when you are actually stretching the rubber while heating it okay so let's go for it so all solids have a finite thermal conduct so you need to pay attention to this particular thing because you know uh, we'll be talking a bit of importance uh, you know uh, in this particular slide so let's uh, talk about this a solid all solids have a finite thermal conductivity and there will be always a temperature gradient inside the solid whenever heat is added or removed so please try to pay attention to this particular line that uh, all solids will have a finite thermal conductivity okay so k will have a particular value it cannot be infinite okay and there will be always a temperature gradient because uh, if it is a solid so the heat transfer will be conduction and when there is a conduction so heat so there has to be dt by dx and, and that's the temperature gradient okay by now you should be able to you know figure out what is dt by dx okay so uh, inside the solid whenever heat is added or removed however for solids of large thermal conductivity with surface area that are large in proportion to their volume like plates and the metallic wires the internal resistance l by ka can be assumed to be small or negligible in comparison with the convective resistance 
1 by H A. So by this time you should be aware of what is L, what is L by K A and what is 1 by H A because it's the beginning thing that we have done. So 1 by H A is the convective resistance, convective heat transfer resistance due to convection and L by K A is resistance uh, in the heat transfer due to conduction. Okay, so typical examples of this type of heat flow are that is heat transfer or uh, heat treatment of metals and the time response of thermocouples and uh, therm and the thermometers etc see uh, what do you mean by you know time response because see you know uh, when you are uh, when you are having when you are down with the fever then uh, suppose if you are having the, the mercury based thermometer so there is a mercury here it does not rise instantaneously when it touches your body which is already hot it actually goes gradually 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 and shows you the reading suppose it is 100 degrees Fahrenheit okay so uh, it is in the fever state now so 100 degrees Fahrenheit it does not reach just like this it actually takes some time and then it moves gradually up okay so this is and when it moves gradually up so that means the time is included here and since the time is included here and the temperature is changing from minimum to the maximum so it means it's a very fitting example of transient once again okay so heat treatment so here it is time response of thermocouples and thermometers so that is time response okay uh, had there been some other liquid it would have been possible uh, that uh, it actually goes up very quickly and had there been some other liquid instead of the first one or the second one the third one is having you know lesser time response so you would have to heat and then it would actually rise to a little extent so it actually depends on liquid to liquid or the fluid to fluid which is actually there for the thermometer or for the thermocouple thermocouple is nothing but uh, it is actually you know conjunction of two metals which actually you know uh, you know produces electric current uh, which actually displays the amount of temperature in a digital display so that is uh, thermo uh, that is uh, thermocouples or the thermistors okay the process in which the internal resistance is assumed negligible in comparison with its surface resistance is called newtonian heating or cooling process okay this is quite important the process in which the internal resistance is assumed to be negligible okay now we are considering that the internal resistance is actually negligible okay so that is the first thing there's a lumped parameter analysis this is the beginning of the lumped parameter analysis so comparison with its surface resistance is called newtonian heating or cooling process okay the temperature in this process is considered to be uniform at a given time such an analysis is called lumped parameter analysis and in my theory video i have already explained you what is lumped parameter analysis it's again we'll be discussing biots number once again so when the biots number falls down below 0 0.1 so there you go for the lumped parameter analysis and in simpler terms when you neglect the internal resistance of a body to the surface resistance of a body then you deploy the lumped parameter analysis okay this is already done so uh, it's just the basis okay and this again we have done in the theory video and since it's a tutorial so it's my duty to you know talk everything about the derivation or the numerical right so uh, let us consider let us consider a body whose initial temperature is tt throughout and which is placed suddenly in an ambient air or any liquid at a constant temperature ta okay the transient response uh, this is the figure 4.1 a okay the transient response of a body can be determined by relating its rate of change of internal energy with convective exchange at the surface okay so this is a particular body whose internal resistance has been neglected okay so it's a control surface okay so uh, what's happening is the temperature that is the internal temperature the temperature that is inside the body which is actually generating the internal heat the heat is actually moving out instantaneously from the center towards this what does it mean it means that there is no internal resistance to the heat right so that is what we are talking about so when there is no internal so when there is negligible internal uh, the internal resistance to the heat so then the heat that is there inside it it actually goes out here instantaneously okay so it is like e out is equals to q convection so it is again you know the newton's law of cooling it is h a delta t so here is again h a delta t and due to this uh, you know change in heat or due to this uh, you know uh, convection due to this heat convection 
you know the internal the internal energy of the body is actually changing so the internal energy of body you know what is internal energy so internal energy is mc dt or mc delta t okay so the same thing m is equals to density into the volume okay c is a specific heat and this you know and since delta t by delta small t so here uh, they have represented it with tau tau is nothing but the time okay so for the lumped heat capacity system okay now uh, this they have done uh, this the uh, th uh, this particular arrangement has been shown in an electrical circuit here in front of you so what does it actually tells you it actually tells that there is a temperature difference okay there is a temperature difference so there is a thermal resistance this thermal resistance because heat is only due to convection there is no conduction heat transfer so it is actually the resistance here okay now this rho v c this is actually you know the parameters of any body okay so the parameters of any body volume is the volume of any body you cannot change the volume right you cannot change the heat capacity of the body so this is actually the capacitor okay this is actually the capacitor so let's talk about it so q is equals to minus rho v c dt by d tau and that is equal to the convection heat transfer here the rho is the density v is the volume c is the specific heat of the body h is the unit surface conductance t is the temperature of the body at any time degree celsius okay a is the surface area of the body t a is the ambient temperature in degree celsius and tau is the time in seconds okay let's discuss this once again okay so this was our basic equation this was the equation when the uh, when the heat is coming out of the body instantaneously and there is a loss due to convection then the internal energy of the system is changing so you know this is an integral operator this is again an integral operator so you have to arrange it like that see here this is an integral operator of the temperature so the temperature has to come with it okay and time there is nothing uh, there is no integral operator for the uh, integral variable for the time so the time will remain alone okay so you have to uh, you know integrate on both sides so when you inter and since it's an indefinite integral so there will be a constant so here is a constant okay so the boundary conditions will be now when when you are starting the clock when you are starting the timer so initial temperature will remain the initial temperature so whatever the body was holding the temperature or say whatever the temperature the body was holding at that point of time so we are talking about the initial temperature at that point of time so it is at tau is equals to 0 to t is equals to ti so if you just put it here if you just put it here you will get c1 the the only constant here so uh, you can write it like c okay capital c nothing as c1 or c2 so let it be c so c will be natural log of ti minus tu you just put it you will get it okay nothing uh, uh, nothing so uh, panicking about it so it is ln t minus ta so is equals to minus ha rho bc tau plus ln just putting it here okay now what you do you actually see this is ln here this is ln here keep them together okay and it will be like uh, it will be like the temperature profile once again okay and it is like this okay now the following points are worth noting here what are those following points equation this gives the temperature distribution in the body for newtonian heating or cooling and it indicates that temperature rises exponentially with the time okay you can already see that this uh, which there is a uh, term of exponential e okay so that is actually making the temperature rising exponentially okay so you can see in this graph you can see again in this graph so nothing very important uh, nothing uh, so important about it so see now this is important the quantity rho v c by h a has the dimensions of time okay and is called thermal time constant now this you need to keep this in mind that this particular thing whenever they ask you to derive and uh, and you know in every year you will find this question the derive and discuss or discuss or derive the thermal time constant so whenever they have asked you to derive this particular thing so you need to go back and to start from here uh, you might or might not 
draw this electrical circuit. So if you're not drawing the electrical circuit, no issues with that. But you need to show with the body, uh, with any abrupt edges, that, uh, that the heat is actually getting transferred to the outer ambient instantaneously without encountering any, any internal resistance. Okay, so uh, with this derivation, you actually tend to Okay, so uh, see, uh, there is a tau here, right? So this tau has a dimension of time. So exponents, something which is there in the power of the exponent will not have two dimensions together until and unless it has been intended to do so. So we are actually calculating the thermal time constant. So the thermal time constant will actually have the dimensions of time, right? So when, and, uh, and this temperature on the left hand side is a temperature ratio. So this temperature ratio will be a dimensionless term. So the right hand side should always be a dimensionless term. You have to match the dimensions, right? That is what we have learned in dimensional analysis. So the dimensions has to be matched. So since in the left hand side, since it's a dimensionless quantity, so again, it will be a dimensionless quantity. So tau having the, the dimension of seconds, uh, have, having the unit of seconds. So Rho Bc by Ha will also have the dimension of seconds. So seconds to seconds will actually neglect it. Okay, so that will be a thermal time constant. Okay, its value is indicative of the rate of response of a system to sudden change in its environmental temperature. That is how fast the body will respond to a change in environmental temperature. Okay, so this is the thing. Okay, this is the capacity. That is the resistance that we have already shown there. Okay. So, figure 4.1b, the electrical circuit, shows an analogous electrical network for a lumped heat capacitor system in which capacitor CTH, the thermal capacitor, is equal to rho Bc that we have already seen, represents the thermal capacitor of the system. The value of CTH can be obtained from the following thermal and electrical equations. So, it is like the capacitor charge, you know, you have already studied in the electrical engineering. So, the capacitor charge is equal to the C that is the capacitance and E that is the potential or the E it is the EMF that is the electromotive force or the voltage if you talk about okay so let's go ahead so here the power on exponential H A by rho Bc tau can be arranged in dimensionless form as like H A by rho Bc okay so it will be like H V by K A and then it will be a square because a was already there in this term. So k by rho v square because v was again already there with this term c tau. So we all know as we have already seen in my theory video. So it was like h l by k and alpha t alpha tau by l square. What was alpha? What was alpha? Alpha is actually written here. Alpha is thermal diffusivity of solid. Now you should be really acquainted about this term because we have done it when we were doing the lecture for unit one. Okay, so alpha is K by rho C is thermal diffusivity of the solid and L is the characteristic length of the uh, 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 of the body. So characteristic length is nothing but volume is equal to area into length. So length will be is equal to volume upon area. So flat plate cylinder, you just have to, you know, uh, write the formula of area and the volume and you will get the respective uh, uh, the characteristic length. Okay, so this H L by K is nothing but the Biot's number, right? So the Biot's number is very important because this is the deciding criteria whether you will be deploying this formula or you will be using the graphical formula. So when the Biot's number is lesser than 0 0.1, you will be using this formula, lumped parameter. And when the Biot's number is greater than 0 0.1, you will be using the graphical chart or it is called the Heisler's chart, okay? So this is the deciding criteria. It's a, it's a dimensionless number. It is H L by K. Okay. Alpha tau by L square. It is again a dimensionless number, and I've already told you alpha tau by L square is the Fourier's number. So uh, this is very important. So that equation. So that equation. Okay. So this equation can also be written as. This equation can also be written as this, that is exponent of minus of Biot's number into Fourier's number, okay? So uh, 